Okay, so this title is not for clickbait. I really do love the Apple Watch Ultra. I hate the iPhone 14 series, and I couldn't care less about the AirPods. I had to wait to make this video because I didn't just want to be reactionary. I didn't want to add to the noise of the crazy frenzy that was happening immediately after the Apple event on social media. No, I wanted to, instead of rattling off the specs of the new devices, I wanted to appreciate and understand what these specs mean for people and then create the video after a day or two that you're seeing now. So if you like that idea and you like the way that I think about tech, hit the subscribe button, click the bell for more. And let's start with the Apple Watch Ultra. The reason I like the Apple Watch Ultra is because for the first time, I feel like one of these devices in the iPhone, iPad, AirPods, Apple Watch realm earns the name Pro. And they don't even call it Pro, they call it the Ultra. But it is thought of as a tool first. It is a tool for professionals. iPhones, iPads, Apple Watches, as much as I love the iPad, they're basically glorified productivity entertainment devices at best. They're not really being used in the professional world by video creators, photo editors, what have you, music production people, um, serious number crunchers and Xcode users, they're not using any of these devices. So you're calling them pro, but let's actually see some pro work out in the world being done. No matter how many commercials Apple makes about the iPhone 14 or the iPhone 13's camera being ready for movies, let's wait until Spielberg or somebody is pulling out an iPhone uh, to say that it's really pro. But I say all that to say the Apple Watch Ultra, it seems like it really satisfies all the needs of anyone who would need a smartwatch that they're going to push to the extremes in terms of cold, heat, depth, in terms of dust, in terms of battery life. This thing gets 36 hours of regular use and then up to 60 hours in its power reserving mode. I think you can even do an Iron Man challenge uh, in terms of uh, battery life on this thing with juice left to spare. That is a serious help for people who would then also get on a phone call or receive a text message with that same device, leaving the iPhone behind. Like this is this is wearable tech that is actually starting to seriously be able to help people. Um, we saw the stuff about car crashes uh, that it can detect and about times that the Apple Watch has made emergency uh, contact so that it could actually save people's lives. And I know the new iPhone is doing that kind of stuff as well. Uh, but the Apple Watch Ultra is a serious tool now that uh, in combination with its ability to uh, watch your heart rate and blood oxygen and stuff like that, help women do cycle tracking and stuff like that, it's genuinely really useful for regular real life things. Um, and so that's why I really love the Apple Watch Ultra. I wish they had called it the Apple Watch Pro, but nonetheless, it is seriously pro. Now, from that argument, let's talk about the iPhone 14, which I do hate. And I know you're probably saying, why are you using such strong words? It's just to get a reaction. I hate it because this is not the first time that this has happened. Okay, I really wish that Apple would go back to their S naming, uh, the S moniker for their iPhone models so that we would know what to expect. This phone, the iPhone 14, is basically the iPhone 10 version 4, series 4. It's not really changed since the iPhone 10 in terms of form factor, in terms of basic functionality. It's just improved on a lot of those things. Now, I do love what they've done with the new Dynamic Island. That is a really great way to take a kind of sucky inconvenience, which is that you have to put a giant hole in the middle of an otherwise beautiful screen. Uh, they, they had fun with it in a way that only Apple can do, and it's actually very cool. But... Ultimately, it's an S update. You have slightly improved cameras. I mean, we know that the A16 is capable of processing something above 4K, maybe even 6K. Uh, the sensor is larger. You got a 48 megapixel camera. Why are we not getting higher resolution video recording here? Especially when you upgrade the cinematic mode in the, in the iPhone 14 to 4K HDR, right? With uh, your ability to control the autofocus after you've already recorded the video. There's some serious horsepower in the new iPhone 14 but we don't get 6k or 8k recording that seems odd to me and that's why ultimately dynamic island is not enough uh, to make this more than just an s update and so what i hate about the iphone 14 and the entire series is that it is just another s iteration and of course this helps apple because they want you to buy every iphone so why would they tell you it's an s model so that you can wait the s years S iPhones would have ridiculously low sales because everybody would always wait for that next number, right? 
So I get why they got rid of it from a business standpoint, but uh, from a consumer standpoint, it's just, it's, it's actually pretty annoying. Now, there are four iPhone models, and the way you can break this down is you have the regular 14 series and you have the Pro 14 series. The regular 14 series comes in two sizes, the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Plus. Move that over. The Pro series has the iPhone 14 Pro and the iPhone Pro Max, iPhone 14 Pro Max. So with the 14 regular, uh, you have the bigger screen size now for the first time. And I think this is going to be the best selling version of the iPhone 14 because plenty of people want the bigger screen but don't need the extra horsepower. I mean, these things will have basically iPhone 13 Pro Max chips inside of them. And you can get away with iPhone 12 and even iPhone 11 Pro Max chips today with modern apps and games and productivity tools. So certainly the iPhone 14 Plus is going to have all the horsepower that 99% of people need in their phone. And that's it. And it also comes with a larger screen size of the Pro Max while only being charged an extra $100 from the very base model iPhone 14. I think that's just an ultimate sweet spot for a lot of people. Now, when you get to the Pro versions, uh, the update is Dynamic Island. And you have the A16, which at this point, iOS just doesn't take advantage of. Much like with the iPad Pro, uh, the software is not able to take advantage of the hardware right now. And then finally, I guess if we have to, let's talk about the new AirPods, which I really couldn't care less about. And this is why. I could describe this as new, improved, and unimportant. What do we expect from AirPods? We expect them to improve with every iteration, so they have better noise cancellation. They have a case now that it could wirelessly charge before, but now it can wirelessly charge from an Apple Watch charger. It has a lanyard hole, so you can put a wrist strap on it. Maybe they'll make an Apple Watch band that can also function as a strap for your AirPods. Um, and then you've got a speaker on the case so that you can find your case if you lose it. You've got controls for the volume from the, from the stems now, which is cool. They're just improvements. I think what everybody really is waiting for and wanting is a lossless codec. They want lossless that we can get from Apple Music. We want that on our wireless devices. Otherwise, we're good. I mean, it's good enough for lossy music. It's good enough for lossy podcasts. It's good enough for lossy uh, audiobooks. It's like every AirPods model has decent audio quality for those things. If we want something really better in terms of quality, we're going to a wired set of headphones at that point. So uh, I really think that if it's possible, Apple certainly has the money to R&D or research and develop a new standard of wireless uh, audio that is lossless in quality. And at that point, it would wipe away every other wireless headset on the market, including destroying every other pair of AirPods ever released. Uh, because there's, there's a night and day difference between the quality of lossless audio and lossy audio that we get from Bluetooth and Apple's wireless transmission standard. So guys, that's why I love, hate, and couldn't care less about Apple's three new products. And if you agree with my reasoning here, my sentiment, let me know with a comment down below and like the video if you wanna see more people see this video so we can try and come together as a community with a consensus about these new phones because when we do that, the big companies here, when everybody feels the same way or at least has a general consensus, that's when the companies move to make improvements. Look what happened, and it took some time, but look what happened with the MacBook Pros, right? They had gone completely portless besides your USB-C. Now we've got HDMI, SD card readers back, all that kind of stuff, and even MagSafe, which we never thought would really come back, is back on the Pro machines. It's because everybody decided, hey, Apple, make this move. We're tired of this. So, I've said my piece. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for more. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granny Geek Show.